Thanks for coming back over here because it's getting kind of boring. Hey, that's pretty good. That's awesome. I, I don't think I've ever got all of those in one day before. And were you doing that all on a crankbait? Yep, all, all, every single one of them on the crankbait. Oh. The snake at the top Yeah, those, those, well, I've only seen one snake head caught, but that's pretty entertaining. Yeah, they're, they're, they're something special. I caught a 13 pounder yesterday right up there in that first little cove. I saw you fishing over there a few days ago, so I went over there like to see what the heck you were doing after you left. Uh -huh. I couldn't figure it out. I was doing the same thing. I, I found some grass there. Yep. I was using my crankbait to find the grass. Yeah. And once I found the grass, I was throwing a little drop shot in it. Yeah. And when we bumped into each other the other day, I stopped there. It was run right after you. It was crazy. Well, I saw you sitting there for the longest time, and yeah. I'm thinking like, he must be on something over there. Every cast, I was like, holy now, what were you doing when you were looking in your tackle box? Like you'd catch one and then you would look in your tackle box or do something. You'd sit for a little bit. Yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to tra change up all the different crankbaits, see if I could find a different color that would work. Uh huh. I just quit working. I didn't realize at the time the snake had broken it. So I would catch one and then I'd look around and see, you know, what else do I have that could, you know, that's kind of close to what I was throwing. Well, I was telling one of my friends, it's like there's this guy out here and he was catching fish, but after he'd catch one, he'd sit down and he's studying his tackle box. And Sometimes I, 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 I have a scale, one of those culling scales. Yeah. So when I sit down with the fish, I'm actually weighing it. So I have a real good idea what my best five are all the time. Really? Yeah, so right now I know that I'm, I'm right, oh, right under 18 pounds. Really? Best five, yeah. It's a really great little scale. Yep. Uh, I unfortunately, I've only used it in a couple of tournaments. I just got it this year. But I, I love doing it and I'm practicing with it so I can, you know, I want to make sure that I'm very confident with it before I use it in a tournament. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You got 18 pounds today. So what's your big bass out here? Oh, out here? Yeah. The river period, over eight pounds. That's a big bass out I, here. There was like a six year stretch every year in February. I caught one eight pounds or bigger. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, same area too. It's, it's funny. Uh, my daughter always comes with me, and so it's, it's one of those things. I, I keep all the pictures, and that's how I keep track. I used to keep journals. Uh huh. And now I just take pictures on my phone. Yep. I take them home, download them on the computer, add the date, the time. Well, the time, date and time stamps on it. Add what bait I used, what the tide was, what the water clarity was, all that. So. You need to be a professional uh, fishing guide. <laughs> you no, know, I thought about being a guide, but. So much pressure. I know you got to catch fish when you bring. Put people on fishing, and I love bringing my daughters, and I bring my friends, and any little kids in the neighborhood that their parents wanted to come out, I'll bring them. But I couldn't imagine charging somebody, and then <laughs> you know, if I couldn't get them a fish, <laughs> I'd feel horrible. Also, uh, beginners sometimes have a hard time catching fish. Yeah, you know, I'm actually better with beginners because I'll put them on a senko with a little split shot, you know, yep. eight inches up the line. Yeah. And just let them throw it out and really, real slow. Yep. That, it's it's kind of like a, a Carolina rig, you know, but a finesse style. Yep. Almost always they'll catch one in here. Oh, interesting. And then I was telling my friend, I don't know what he's throwing, but he really throws a long way, so he's throwing something heavy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it goes a long yeah, they, they, They'll go good. There's no wind. You can chuck them. <laughs> and my friend fishes like you. He likes that long cast and fairly fast retrieve. And you know, it's funny. I was I was burning this thing the last time I saw it. What was it? Tuesday I saw you out here. Oh no, uh, yeah. Yesterday, Tuesday and Thursday, right? Well, I tried to come every day this week. <laughs> okay. I've been out four days this week, but I think I saw you on Tuesday, and I have been just burning it, burning it, and then I watched a guy come through here, uh, didn't recognize him at first, but he was just flat knocking him dead, and he was just reeling like this, yep. and then I recognized him, and he was using the same exact bait I was, and he, he was catching 10 to 1 that I was catching, so I started just doing this medium retrieve, yep. and sure enough, I started catching him too.
Interesting. Yeah. It is. It's fish want something different all the time. You know, that's funny too. Is I was just thinking that until I realized my lure was sinking. I was wondering, you know, is it the light? I know the the wind was blowing in there earlier, which makes it a little better to throw moving baits and you know the tide. But now the tide's up, so I should. But who knows? Are you throwing? Is that chartreuse? Yeah. And what is the bait you're throwing? It's a man's minus one. Okay. The original ones. I, these are like 22, 23 years old. 20. <laughs> yeah, the, the new ones, they make them out of different, you know, they, they used to be made in man's factory. Now they're outsourced to China. Yep. They, they use a cheaper plastic. And you got to buy like five or six of the same color to get one that will actually attract right. Yep. And so I, I try to stick to all the old ones. They run truer. They're better made, but... Gonna, eventually I'm going to run out of them. So. <laughs> you mean you're using them that you've had for 20 years? Well, I just, I, I break them out a couple each year. And so <laughs> this year I broke, out, I broke out these ones that I've been using. And unfortunately, the one that's been catching all the fish is broken now. Uh, one of my friends took me to the Susquehanna and we, he had a guide. And so he had this bait uh, that was like you're saying, you know, like 20 years old. Uh -huh. And uh, it definitely caught fish, you know, but he didn't want me to lose it. Yeah, that's, uh, I just saw a guy today, I was fishing around Marsh Island, and uh, he caught a big snakehead, and it broke his lure. Oh. He was cussing it, and then I started talking to him, and as it turns out, we both throw the same kind of chatter. Neither one of us would say the name, but it, we both, you know, and it was kind of a hint. It was like, well, I use the chatter baits. They sold the patent to the company that makes all the chatterbaits now, he was like, that's what I just broke. So we buy them, we search them up on the web and they cost like $30 each plus 20 some dollars shipping. So when you when you break one or lose one, it's not a good thing. And uh, so like when I bring my wife out here, I need to rig her up wacky with a weight up a foot or two up the line. You know, you could do that or just get a weighted wacky hook I, wait, I got those, yep. I think that's that's probably easier. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, I like to use, I just rig their, tech, their rig, their, their uh, Senko's Texas rig so that they can't get stuck in the grass and then I just put a real small split shot about eight inches up the, up, and then all they're doing is pulling that split shot through the grass. And it's enough that it gives them a feel so you know, it's not like completely weightless. Yep. But it also lets that Senko flutter up and do its thing back down through. Yep. I think it's a little easier for kids to fish than a wacky. Oh, got you. I actually have trouble recognizing a bite on wacky. <laughs> you know, it, it is, if you're not watching your line or holding your line, it is pretty tough. Yep. So how many fish have you caught today? Well, when the tide was going out, I came, after I left Marsh Island, I think I caught six at Marsh Island. I caught 20 some in here. 20? Yep. It was, it was a whack fest. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I power pulled down maybe a little bit further in right here, and I just kept making repeated ca spin casts in it. Every other cast, another one, another one, another one. So I may have sore mouth all the ones in here that are going to eat the, the crankbaits. Well, I'd say that's a pretty good day. <laughs> Oh yeah, it was, it was good. Not like the old days, but it was still a good day. Twenty. I think my my and I'm not fishing. You were fishing a long day too. Yeah, I started at. Uh, I think I got out here about. Well, I came over here at one thirty. <laughs> so I got to, I got to uh, uh, Marsh Island about probably about eleven. Yep. So this and Marsh Islands is that your go-to places? Yeah. I, Marsh Island has been real slow. I mean, with the, when we had that real low tide, you know, when the wind blew the tide out, yep. and it got real bad, I think a lot of the fish that have moved up were in those pads around Marsh Island. Yep. That was all, I, I came out. And, I mean, it was mud.